And a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Cosmas. Thanks for joining me today for a quick chat and, of course, our morning cup of coffee. And I have the, uh, the Mario mug going here, and that might seem a little strange because today we're remembering St. Stephen, the great Mars. You might say, well, why do you have Mario uh, going when you're talking about uh, St. Stephen? And uh, so that's because St. Stephen, of course, is known as the first martyr in the church. His, his martyrdom is recorded in the Bible, in the book of Acts. And because martyrdom is associated with sacrifice, um, I wanted to talk about sacrifice, um, you know, as we are now sort of wrapping up our holiday season a little bit. I mean, we're getting ready for New Year's, but we're in between the two holidays. We're in between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, so we're on Christmas break. And so you have parents dealing with kids. And when parents are dealing with kids who might be, you know, represented here by Mario, by the video games, parents have to deal with sacrifice. And so it seemed like a logical connection. Maybe it's a bit of a forced segue, and I apologize for that. But um, our kids are on break. And you know, as the Christmas Carol says, right, and mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. Exactly. That's, that's where we are at some point right now. And because when we're dealing with kids, there's a little bit, or actually a lot, of sacrifice that's involved. And that's part of the blessing of parenthood, um, that you are giving constantly, sacrificing what you want constantly. And any sacrifice that we make is sort of, in a sense, a very fundamental, very sort of rudimentary imitation of Christ, who makes the ultimate sacrifice. But we want to, in our lives, try to sacrifice as much as we can. Like it or not, as a parent, kids force you into that. They force you to sacrifice constantly. And so that's why they're a blessing in the spiritual life. And so we try to figure out now, as we're dealing with kids, to sort of embrace the time. You know, we can sort of wish it away and uh, say, oh my gosh, you know, it's just, what, seven more days, six more days, five more days, and then they're going to go back and I don't have to deal with them running around the house, driving me crazy, doing everything that they're doing. But, uh, and grandparents, you know, again, or godparents, same thing, that you're dealing with kids that, you know, maybe in a different way, you could be saying, oh, I'm not going to go over to my daughter's house today or my son's house today because the kids are there and I just, I got a headache after being with them all, you know, over the weekend uh, for all that. I, I need a couple of days off. You know what? How many days do you get with your grandkids or with your kids at that age to be able to play and to be able to enjoy them while they're little, they get big and they grow up so quick. Um, so while they're home, driving you nuts, playing video games, or you know, watching TV or streaming or on their tablets, doing whatever they're doing, uh, as parents, try to engage them. And as grandparents, come over. As godparents, go over. As relatives, spend time with them. Engage them. Talk to them. Play with them. Um, you know, as much as we possibly can, it's important for, for the older generation to pass down information and knowledge and faith to the next generation. And uh, of course that starts with our parents, but it also continues with our grandparents and godparents and our relatives and beyond. So uh, let's not look at Christmas break or winter break as the sort of uh, necessary evil that we have to deal with, but an opportunity where we can spend a little bit more time with our kids in positive ways and pass along uh, a little bit of our faith and a little bit of our knowledge about the birth of Christ and about Christmas. And we do that each and every day. Amen.